Hi, today we're going to see how to work CSS. I'm going to demonstrate three words or three ways to use CSS with you. I'm going to show you how to create an external style sheet, which is the most common way to do this. I'm going to show you how to do an embedded style sheet. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to do an inline style. Of the three, all are used, but external style is the most important as it allows you to copy CSS from page to page. Um, if you watched my Behold the Power of CSS video, you saw that CSS is what makes a website look pretty. Um, it allows you to change color, layout, position, fonts, nearly anything you want. Today's demonstration will be very basic, just showing you how to set it up and creating some simple selectors. I have, in brackets, a straightforward HTML page. It's about Pittsburgh sports. I have a variety of uh, pages, arenas, index, Penguins, Pirates, River Hounds, and Steelers. When I take a look at it and output, it looks like a basic web page. My links are across the top. They all work. They're currently blue because I haven't visited anything. If I go to, say, the sports arenas, I have a page full of headers and text, and the page link turned purple. I go back home. They're both now purple because I visited those. I can change everything on this page based on or using CSS. So I'm gonna start with the most important one to learn, and that is the embedded style sheet. I'm sorry, the external style sheets. What you do is you go up to your file menu in brackets and you do new and your file save as. Make sure it's in your correct folder. Call it something like style.css. Like the HTML page, the .css is very important. This tells the web browsers that this is a cascading style sheet document and that it's legitimate, and it should be allowed through the browsers. Inside here, we're going to create a series of rules using selectors. The selectors match up to your tags. So if I look at my index page, I have an A tag, I have a body tag, I have an H1 tag, I have a P tag. I can change all those by setting selectors. In order to make it visible here, I need to add a link line. Link rel equals style sheet. This is telling the browser and web servers that this is a style sheet. href is the location. And since I'm using brackets, it very nicely fills in my, my information for me. So link rel equals style sheet, href equals style.css. This line is important. In a moment, we'll put this onto every page. For now, I'm just going to add some color to it, literally. I'm going to go back down to my style.css documents, and I'm going to set two entries. Currently, background is white, foreground is black. If you know anything about Pittsburgh sports, we're a black and yellow kind of town. So I'm going to start by setting the H1 tags to be yellow. So I started with H1, which is my selector. I put a curly brace in, which opens and closes my block of formatting. And inside, I set properties and values. I'm going to set the color to be a yellow. There are many ways to do it. You can type yellow here and get some of the building colors. Or you can use an RGB value. And it's a value between 255 and 0. This will be yellow. Um, or there's a hex value, which I'll show you again here in a moment. I save this. I've now set this to the RGB 255000. When I hover over it, you see it's bright yellow. That's a feature of most modern web browsers and web editors. When I come back to my output, I refresh. There it is. It's yellow. Now, you know that, or you should remember that brackets is helping me by highlighting this around blue because I'm editing this H1 selector. When I click out of there and go back, blue goes away. Now, to refresh this terminology, each one's a selector. It's telling you what tags to pick in HTML. Color is a property. I'm setting the color of this. In this case, it's the foreground color. And then RGB is the value of that particular property. I can set as many selectors as I want. I'm going to set the body, and I'm going to set the body to be black. This time, instead of color, I'm going to use background-color. 
watch your spelling. And I see a lot of people forget the G. They'd say back round instead of back round. And this time I'll use an R or an a, a hex value. Hex values are six hexadecimal digits. They start in RGB values. The first two letters are red. The next two letters are green. The last two letters are blue. I'm going to go with black, which in the CSS world is the absence of color. So I'm going to select pound zero 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 zero, and that's black. There are dozens of websites online that can help you with color selectors. There are brackets add-ons that can help you pick colors. Your book talks about how these work in very good detail. I'm going to save this, refresh, and look, I can see my heading, I can see my links, but my text is hidden because the default color is black. I'm now going to set another property here. I'm going to set this to be white. White is the, using all colors, hexadecimally, it's FF, FF, FF. 255 is FF. I save, refresh. It's all white. I don't like the fonts. I'm going to change it to be an Arial fonts. This is telling my browser to go find the font named Arial. Hopefully I spelled it right. If I can't find this font called Arial, pick whatever the default sans serif font is. You do need both of those. That way you have some control. Not every machine has every font. For people on Windows, you have thousands of fonts, especially if Microsoft Office installed. When you go to a Linux machine or an Android phone, those same fonts won't be there. So you need this default backup. When I save and refresh, the font has changed. If I wanted to be a little bit larger, I can set the font size. And you'll notice this one, it's huge. EM is a CSS measurement. It stands for the size of the letter M. It's the suggested measurement for screen objects. It also scales very nicely. So if 1.5 is too big, I set it down to 1.1. But as I zoom this, that font sticks with the size of my zoom. Okay, so you've seen how to use selectors inside of an external style sheet. The cool thing about external style sheets is when I go to every page, I want it to follow. Right now it doesn't. So what I'll do is I'll go back to index, I'll take this line, this link line, and I'll copy it, and I'll go to the same place in every one of my other pages, and paste it in the head. So I'll save all, and now I come back to my outputs. I must have missed Arena. So all the pages work except for Arenas. Let's see what I did wrong with Arenas. Yeah, I forgot to paste it into Arenas. Scroll back up, paste it into Arenas. Again, it's in the header. <clears throat> I tend to put them above the title, although it can be anywhere in the head. And now, there it is. Okay, so notice now my H1s are nice and yellow, but these are white. I want my H1s and my H2s to be yellow. In order to do that, there's two ways I can make that happen. One way, and this is an obvious way, is to simply retype one entry for each selector. And that's fine, except how it repeats here. Now it's yellow. Another way to pull it off, and I'm going to comment using CSS comments, and now block dot that selector. The star slash and the slash star is a CSS select is a CSS comment. You see, it's back to white. I can put a listing up here. This is the H1 tags and the H2 tags, and just to be 
careful. I'm going to put all my tags here. And now H1 and H2 now have the same values. This is using more than one tag as a selector. You will see as you work through the book and work through HTML examples that this can get really complicated. For now, that's all that we're saying here is more than one selector at once. All right, so these are external style sheets. Let's look at an embedded style sheet for that. I'm going to go to Arena's page. An embedded style sheet is a style sheet that's up here at the top. You create a style tag, and then you put your code inside of it. The CSS stands for cascading style sheets. What cascading means is this rule applies first, and then this rule applies second. In the world of rules, the second rule applied wins. So let's say that I want to flip-flop the colors of this page. I want the background of this page to be um, yellow and the foreground all to be black. I can do that. I'll set a body tag. So I'm basically inverting my properties. And I'll make this one black as well. So with this embedded here, this style sheet comes after my external style sheet. Ooh, that's horrible. But it definitely did what I asked. It changed the colors. Go to home, it's black. Here, it's yellow and black. So I've inverted those. And basically what's happened is this set of rules overrode that set of rules. This entry is called an embedded style sheet. You use this when you have one page in your website, you can use an embedded style sheet. Or if you want to override a particular rule, you normally don't put a lot of work in embedded style sheets. Um, the last way to use style here is to do what's called an inline style. And what you do with an inline style is you pick a particular object, like this H1, and you change it. You put a style right inside of the object. See if I got that right. I think actually, I think it's font dash size. Yeah. So I put in here the rule that I wish to set and the value. You may have multiple here. The trick is this particular object will have that font size. Yeah, I got it right. Look how big that is. In case you can't tell, I'll make it ridiculous. This will be 14 size times the size of the letter M. That's pretty big. What you do with embedded or in these inlines is you set particular values to individual objects that you want to mess with. It applies only to this particular rule. Since it's the last rule applied, this is overridden, this is overridden, and this takes over. Now in this case, the H1 is a color, and here it's a font size. These two don't conflict. But if I set a different color, Oh, let's just make something really hideous. I go with brown here. Even though my H1s are supposed to be black, this one overrides that rule. And here it's brown. All right, so this is the basics of how to use CSS. Um, good luck with your studies, and I'll see you next time.